So this is a short video um, about upgrading the speakers that are in the rear of the Jaguar F-Type. Um, these speakers are the ones that sit behind the seat and they're a bit unusual in that they come um, kind of in this very uh, unusual kind of bracket uh, setup. Um, there is two speakers. Um, the actual wiring diagram refers to this as a low range. Um, I'm not sure it looks a bit like a tweeter, but it's obviously not. Um, and this is referred to as a subwoofer. This in my car uh, takes up two channels on the amp and there are actually two sets of wiring to the back of the speakers. Um, this isn't a great quality speaker. The um, sub in the car doesn't really perform that well. Um, most people are focused on upgrading the doors and have kind of left this unit alone because it is such a specialised um, speaker in terms of the way that it's built into the car. However, um, I've not been deterred. Um, I have looked at the various options um, and what I've decided to do is, is actually leave this one up here um, and that all in the upgrade that I'm doing will be left powered by the car's amplifier but this one I'm going to get a separate amplifier for this and this subwoofer I'm going to replace. Um, I want to try and keep it as original as possible. Um, so therefore, um, I'm going to try and keep all of the frame that's involved um, and remove this speaker out the middle. That's a bit tricky uh, because it's actually the frame forms part of the speaker as well. So the cone is attached to this and the magnetic coil underneath is also attached. However, I have um, managed to do that. Um, and what I've ended up is with this. So this is a Hertz Mini Legend 800, 1800mm uh, speaker, roughly around 7 inches, a really unusual size. You won't find many of them. I was kind of restricted in my choice in terms of what I could find. Um, and effectively, I have mounted this into, as you can see, the bracket. So it looks, well, it doesn't look, um, it is pretty much the original setup. Um, but obviously a very different speaker in the middle there. So back to this one, how have I done it? Well, as you can probably tell by the creasing in the cone, I've already messed with this one. So basically what you need to do is work around the edges. Um, there is this uh, foam piece, um, you can prise that off. You need to be gentle with it though, because um, both of mine cracked in terms of coming off, uh, but nothing that can't be repaired. It's just trying to minimize that as much as possible, but it's kind of some epoxic kind of glue that's on it. Um, so once you've got that off um, you can then look at the cone and beneath it and off it just peels off around the edges um, so that will come away. Um, you then have to desolder uh, from the back um, and there are as I mentioned a couple. Um, then it got to be a bit more brutal in that you can see I've actually cut the second cone from the rear here um, and if I pull all of this away, you'll basically see those are the two connections on the back that were soldered in. Um, those come away and those are the two channels on the amplifier. Then what you have to do with the frame is in order to get the uh, magnetic coil piece or the magnet out, um, is you have to kind of cut it out. Um, and kind of on the back, if I flip this one over, Basically, there is a, a little bit of a dome bit of plastic here. So the first bit is to cut into the top bit of the dome to release this. The second bit is then, to, for me, was to cut around the edge. And I'm purely cutting around the edge, because if I go back to this, which is much heavier than that one, um, it's to make sure that you can um, properly fit in the new speaker. In terms of profile-wise, um, the height of that speaker is actually less than the Jaguar one. So in terms of fitting back into the car, there should be absolutely no problems. But as you can see, the frame is pretty much in place. Um, what I also did was I got a small bit of plastic, which I have put in here, which allows me to mount the new speaker on with these four holes. Um, that's because the bit underneath is, um, is quite a thin edge. Um, so although it looks a bit rough and ready, you won't see that once it's in the car. But basically you can then drop um, 
the Mule speaker into there, uh, or rather the Hertz Mule Legend speaker into there. Um, and you end up uh, with something looking like that. You'll notice there is actually down here a bit of a wire hanging off. So if I just flip this over again, it's not that easy to do. So my intent is that if ever I want to go back to the original, I can do. Um, and I just have to connect this in and therefore all the original wiring stays in place. For the speaker setup that I am going to do, um, I am going to connect this up to a new amplifier. So I'm not going to worry about this. This will just be sealed off. But it's there in the future in that if ever I take the amplifier out of the car, I can power this speaker back off um, the original amplifier and the original wiring. The interesting bit, I guess, is there is two channels here. So one ch you see there's three connectors. One goes to the top speaker and two were to the previous sub here. Um, not sure in terms of wiring up. I've only got it on one channel at the moment. I'll probably just stay with that if I take it back to original. But that's not the intent, as I say. The reason for doing it was um, just in case I ever wanted to take it out in the future. I've kind of the new system I'm putting in is I can deep plug it from the car pretty much if I need to. Anyway, hopefully uh, that will be of interest for anybody that's uh, looking to upgrade their speakers. Um, I'm quite looking forward to how that's going to sound in the back of the car. All right, thanks again. Bye.